In 1984, Ronald Cotton was wrongfully convicted of raping a young woman. Despite the victim's attempt to remember the details of the attacker's face, she mistakenly identified the perpetrator as Cotton, who was sentenced for life. Cotton served 10 years before DNA testing became readily available and proved his innocence. He received only $5,000 in compensation from the state after serving 10 and a half years for a crime he didn't commit. Today, testing and analyzing DNA is the most reliable of forensic tools. In the United States, there has been 314 post-conviction DNA exonerations in 37 states. People have been wrongfully accused due to eyewitness identification, false confessions, forensic science misconduct, government misconduct, and bad lawyering. 18 people have been sentenced to death before DNA proved their innocence. The average sentence served by DNA exonerees is 13.6 years. About 50% of DNA exoneration cases have been able to identify the actual perpetrator. Many states have been making reforms to assist those, like Cotton, who have been wrongfully convicted. Take North Carolina, for example. The state requires biological evidence related to major crime to be preserved for several years after the case. A defendant can petition for DNA testing to the court that convicted him. A person pardoned for a crime is eligible to receive $50,000 from the state government for each year of wrongful incarceration, maxing at $750,000. Had these laws been in effect for Ronald Cotton, he would have been awarded $525,000 when pardoned. He could have petitioned the court to re-examine the DNA evidence and been released several years earlier. As forensic science improves, law enforcers are better able to get perpetrators behind bars and keep the innocent out.